Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, bucks, Got things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 morning everybody you are listening to the voice come on dig me now one and only steve harvey oh man got a radio show man got a radio show and a whole lot more too man god is good to me i have no other explanation i have no other explanation of my existence and where i stand in this thing called life except if it was not for the goodness of God Almighty, if it was not for his grace and his mercy, there's no way I could exist the way that I do. I would not be who I am or where I am. I am who I am and where I am simply because God is who he is. If it was not for God, I would have no testimony for you because I would have failed every single test. Plain, pure, pure, and simple. I can sit here today and tell you flat out that it is purely because of God's grace and mercy that I exist today because of his favor. See now, he he shows us favor in life because of a, a combination of things I've discovered. And this is not the whole answer to life. Um, I can assure you it's not. But this is a combination that I've grown to understand better and better. And I wish I had gotten it earlier in my life. But here it is. If you take faith and you combine it with an incredible work ethic, then God has the greatest opportunities to show you favor. That's the best way I can explain success to you from my standpoint. It is the combination of faith and work that produces the most opportunities for God to show you favor. See, a lot of times we want God to bless us, but we ain't doing nothing for him to bless. So now we sideways in the equation a little bit. But see, if you had the faith in God that God can do anything but fail, that God will get you through, that God will see you through, that the God is the God you serve is the greatest giver of all good things. If you kept that faith intact through it all and you produced an incredible work ethic, that allows the most opportunities for God to show you favor. See? Without that, what you want God to do? See, you can have faith and be sitting at the house watching TV, 
there's nothing being produced, no opportunities for God to show you favor. And you got to do some things, man, that you are uncomfortable doing or don't feel like doing or something that don't have the right payoff right in front of your face with the faith that it'll pay off later on. See, too many people are working for the right now reward. And the right now reward is not how it works. Sometimes the reward is coming later on up the road. But the only way you can know that is if you got to you got to apply the faith and see the reason you don't know that that is coming like that. Or you have to have faith to believe that is coming because faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. That's what faith is. You know, you standing at, let me give you an example. You standing at the crosswalk with with a walk sign on it and the the sign flashing on the corner, don't walk. Then the the sign say, walk. What do you think your chances of making it across that street is? Well, pretty good. Because guess what? The signs say walk. You can see the other side. There's other people in the crosswalk walking. So guess what? You strike out blindly. It don't take a lot of faith to get across that street. That's, that's, That's not what I'm talking to you about. I'm talking about the faith, the belief in things that you cannot see. The faith that what I'm doing today, I believe in my heart of heart that God wouldn't bring me this far to leave me, that God is a true and living God, that he keeps his promises, that later on, these things that I'm working towards right now going to pay off later on. See, too many people want the reward right now. See, that's not the exhibition of faith. If it's the right thing to do, if it's if it's a good thing to do, if it's a just thing to do, see, if it's sin in it, it ain't God. You can just clear it on up right there. You can stop all the wondering if that's his voice talking to you, if it's the right thing to do. If it's sin in it, it's not God talking to you. Kill it. You, you, you can shut it down. You ain't got to wonder about it. Go down there and seek revenge. That ain't God. Go tell them off when you see them. That ain't God. Anything that's got sin in it is not God's voice telling you to do it. So you can, you can kill that conversation today. That's how you know. But if you align yourself up, man, and you and what you're doing is just and right and correct and pleasing in the sight of God, it'll pay off for you later on. And see, uh, here's, 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 here's the best way I can tell it to you. Here's another one. When you're going somewhere, when you're, when you're on the road to going somewhere, and you know the somewhere that you're trying to get to, Let's say you've set a goal or a vision for yourself. You know where you want to get to. You got a got a good idea. And you on your way to going there. Listen to me. When it gets hard, and it is going to get hard, when it gets difficult, and it is going to get difficult, when it becomes challenging, and it is going to become challenging, when it becomes all three of those things, when it don't look like it's going to happen, don't stop and complain so much. But see, I know he done blessed me. But in the middle of it, man, I, I felt a little heavy. And you got to be careful when it get hard for you because you'll find yourself complaining. And when you complain and see, what you can't do is you can't complain so much that you forget that the place that you're trying to go to, you actually on your way there still. See, don't get caught up in the complaining and then lose sight of your blessing that's actually happening to you. What really, man, of, of all the times to register a complaint to God, to sit up and go, hey, man, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I wanted to ease back into this thing. Ease back in. Man, you in. It's, it's a tornado whirling around you. You ain't got time to ease back in. You got to go on and jump back in it. It is what it is. To whom much is given, much is required. Always appreciate the blessings. Don't get so caught up in the complaints that you lose sight of the blessings, man. God got a lot for you in your life, man. But you got to have them two things, y'all. You got to take that faith and you got to apply a, a, a crazy work ethic to it. And that creates the most opportunities for God to show you favor. And when God starts showing you favor, man, all them seeds you planted, all of that, all of that 
wheat you've been sowing, all of that hard work you've been put in, God will pay it off, and he'll pay it off in ways that you don't even see coming. Okay? Cool. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) how I'm here, I am still at the Will Turn Theater with Earth, Wind, and Fire and the damn Isley Brothers. It's Monday oh, morning. We? I survived it. We are here. Let's get it on. Steve Harvey Morning Show. Yeah. Shirley Strawberry. Woo-hoo! Steve, you did your thing on the versus battle last night. I loved it. It was my favorite one so far. And you were blue cheese. <laughs> oh, but Ron Isley, though. Lord have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carla Pharrell. Best versus battle ever <laughs> you killed it blue cheese what's up good morning oh lord is junior here <laughs> yeah. look, look, look out, i can't pimpin'. see nobody <laughs> look out look out pimpin how you doing yeah. brother good to yeah. see you yeah yeah, yeah. 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 was your 70s uh junior? i'm converted i'm here <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. You left the nineties? Yeah. You left Jody C. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Nephew Tommy. In the building, baby. In yeah. the building. Congratulations, big dog. In the building. The best message I got after his older, older came from my daughter Carly. Mm-hmm. Carly said, Great job tonight, Dad. You was cleaner than Clorox tonight. <laughs> and absolutely great as the host. You bought laughter, but you showed your love and respect for the music. We got to witness history tonight. And what a joy to see you up there performing with not only your friends, but singing the music that was the soundtrack to your life. So much love. So many wow. memories. Love you. That was my daughter. That was the best message. That was I got. beautiful. Oh, that, that was a very beautiful, beautiful yeah. message. Because yeah. you know what, man? I mean, to do. It, it was the soundtrack of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I cut all the stories out I was going to do. Yeah, yeah, because people were getting impatient with the stories. They didn't, you know. Yeah, they was. They, right. they were getting impatient with the stories. See, but, see, but they they didn't understand what Ron Isley and them and, 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 and Earth, Wind, and Fire was expected to do. Mm-hmm. See, because they don't watch verses, you know. So mm-hmm. they just came up there. They were going to sit there and talk about each song. So when oh. D-Nice played the song and then he cut it off, they just, I had to start, you know, talking and filling it in, you know, until they warmed up. Because these are not TV performers. These is live performers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know? I see what you're saying. So uh-huh. the second half, man, they understood better, man. But it was just like an honor, man. It was just a real honor, man, to sit there. Yeah, it was it really was, good. Oh, though, great, man. It was good, yeah. Steve. Oh, it was good. Oh, that Come purple on, suit, though, with that white hat. What? Oh. I'm saying, what? Huh? <laughs> and was the other one leather? The white hat? Wasn't it a purple hat? Le- no, it was a white hat. It was a white hat with a purple suit. Oh. With a with purple yeah. anthemist on the side of it. Oh, Am- excuse amethyst. me. Oh, yeah. Amethyst. Amethyst. No, no. Amethyst. <laughs> Coming up at 32 minutes purple, after the two hour. Two purple rocks. We'll, yeah, amethyst. We'll have, we'll have more about last night's versus battle hosted by our very own Steve Harvey. And, of course, we'll uh, ask the CLO right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, you hosted the versus battle last night. It was Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Isley Brothers. You were the host. Um, it was so many great moments, but one of the ones that touched me was when they all said they wouldn't have done it without you. I mean, both yeah. you were the general, only host. Yeah, That's, it was a yeah. general consensus that they yeah. loved having you host them. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was great, man, because they didn't get a chance. But you know, I did Earth, Wind, and Fire's Lifetime Achievement Award mm-hmm. on BET. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. put their hands in the concrete at. Uh, at uh, on Sunset, um, you Chinese know, uh, uh-huh. I wrote mm-hmm. the forward Man's to Chinese Maurice theater. White's book. Yeah, mm-hmm. me and Ron go back. Me and Ron been together through a couple of marriages, you know. <laughs> just stuff. They like got real long personal. Time. Yeah, long yeah. time friend. Ron said, "Don't nobody know me better than you. Nobody." 
<laughs> and so, man, it, it was like really cool, man. I was just wishing that everybody understood because they don't watch verses and mm-hmm. neither do I. Mm-hmm. So they thought they were under the conception that you play a song and you talk about it and just like background. But they, you know, they was talking about who wrote the songs and stuff, which was going over people's heads. They didn't know because they thought they were supposed to sit there and just listen to the music. Oh, and not perform. Yeah, they didn't okay. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Swiss oh. gave us a call. Said uh-huh. we need a little more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was probably more a hard something. call for him to make though. No, nah, <laughs> talking nah, to man, legend. But he, yeah, but you know, but he got it and then we got with D Nice and just said, Hey man, because you know, like if D Nice turned the music off, you know, all I know is dead time. I ain't mm-hmm. got no damn songs. <laughs> so all right. I got is talk. Yeah. So you right. know that's I, radio, no yeah, dead air. You know right. what I mean? I went right. in the mm-hmm. well, hey man, it's Cardinal another rules. story. Waiting on D nice to you know cue up the next one, mm-hmm. but then after a while we got a rhythm. The second half it got it it, it got a lot better, mm-hmm. you know. But you know what people have to understand too is the artists don't get to really pick the songs because you oh. can only play what's on Apple Music because Apple Music has the agreement with Trilla. Okay. So you know you couldn't go back into oh, okay. Paint a Pretty Smile Each Day, Imagination, uh-huh. mm-hmm. stuff like that because if it ain't on the platform, you you had to play what was on the platform. Okay. All yeah, right. Wow. Well, thank you but, for but, breaking that down. For so mm-hmm. many people, though, Steve, we just love what you were doing, what this yeah. whole thing. It was Kings. Hey. Kings yeah. last night. Can I tell Legends. you something? A movement. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I wasn't paying attention when Can't Hide Love came on. Uh-huh. <laughs> we saw you. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we saw <laughs> So what? what did you throw on the set? Did you throw a light? What I threw you... pillars. I picked up a champagne bucket. <laughs> That's what it was, a champagne bucket. I poured I out liquor for my dead homies. <laughs> he did everything. <laughs> Boy, I was, because I, I, you know, look, I can't sing, and I can't even, I can't just holler in the mic how I feel. Uh-huh. I was having moments, man. <laughs> it, for real. Steve, my favorite comment of the night, you know, when people post the comments, uh-huh. this is real music. This is back when we ate chitlins. None of this yeah. vegan stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was oh, all the baby me, girls uh, wanted Ron Isley to be their sugar daddy. <laughs> all the sugar dad, sugar <laughs> babies wanted. Though. Yeah. That damn Ron was so sexy. He was at Ron, 79 years hey man, old. Ron bought 10 outfits. <laughs> you lying. You saw him backstage. Ten. I was backstage with him. He said, I don't know what I'm going to wear, Steve. <laughs> I said, man, I had to go back in my wait closet. A wait a minute. Uh, tell me this. Uh, what made you put Ron coat on, though? What happened at that no, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Ron was saying something that meant something to me. Give me that damn chinchilla, man. <laughs> and let me just stand here. Boy, I was Sonny Calhoun, boy. You don't understand. Oh. Steve, it really was. Because when that song moment. was out, I couldn't afford no fur coat. He don't give a damn about Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that was not full. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sitting there, man. I went Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Ron Isley. I mean, who, who gets to do that? That's right. You know, I really, I had to hold my head down. I bowed my head because I was getting, I was like, man, God, wow. thank you, man. How'd you let this happen to me? Of all the people in the world, mm-hmm. I'm the only one on stage with Irwin and Fire and the Isley Brothers. And for me, and like my daughter said, this music was the soundtrack of my life. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. only friends with them cats. Them songs guided me through some moments in my life, man. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I was sitting there, man. I know. Do you hear me? I know every last one of them damn songs. Oh, we know. We saw you. <laughs> we saw you singing along with them and everything. I knew Dancing. all of them. You know, Sir, Sir Rock had sponsored it, so that uh-huh. messed it up. Cause I was, I was gonna have McCallum and Amaretta. I was gonna make me a Godfather on stage. <laughs> But we had to sit up there with that damn Ciroc. I don't even know what Ciroc is. <laughs> what? Puffy drink. Vodka. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I know. I ain't never that's had that. That's P. Diddy right there, dog. Mm-hmm. I know. That's Appreciate it. Drink. He sponsored. Yeah. That was live. But I had no idea what it was. I kept going. <laughs> then you was at Circo. They owe you a check for that, though. <laughs> yeah. You owe me a check for that. I told him that. I'm holding up Circo, and I didn't even know it was Ciroc. <laughs> you, what you call it? Circo. <laughs> 
I was looking at the bar, had all them flavors on. I said, what is this right here, man? That's yeah. over there with the Oh, my gosh. <laughs> man, it was, it was an epic night, man. I mm-hmm. appreciate all the positive comments. You know, I understand. You know, man, look, young people dominate social media. Mm-hmm. So we had to understand that, too, you know. Yeah. And I uh, said he loves young people. <laughs> right. You know, but, you know, you have to understand how they how they comment. Mm-hmm. They want everything right now, fast. That, uh, like I told them, I say, grown ass people sit around and talk. I you know. been over your uncle's house? <laughs> yes. No, that's a good that. ass time. We play cards, dominoes, we eat and we talk. That's uh-huh. dog. We if we could have sat there and just chopped it up and played the hits, mm-hmm. we'd have been fine. We didn't. We we didn't. You know, I didn't know how the verses format worked. But it turned out to be great, man. I mean, Ron, them, they, they stayed a long time after the show was over, man. Wow. Stayed oh, wow. a long time. Mm, yeah. Great night, man. Coming up next, a special prank phone call from the nephew. <laughs> <laughs> right after this. I think, Carla, you're going to like this one. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Anne is standing by with our national news. And in entertainment news, some sad, 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 heartbreaking news for the ladies. Uh, the Duke of Hastings is uh, well, not coming back for season two of Bridgerton. What? What? That yeah. ain't just for the ladies. Oh, I thought That's it was for me too. The what? For everybody. <laughs> What? The Duke of Hastings, yeah. Boy, that light skinned boy was show. bringing it. You hear me? <laughs> what is you talking about? <laughs> There's that. And then uh, we'll also talk about last night's versus battle. Yeah. The best one ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, it's the day after Easter. And Tommy, you have a special prank. What's happening? What's I got a special on? prank. Everybody, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Friday, we ran Oak Curiosity, and I've been getting mm-hmm. requests after requests. And then I start looking. I say, is Carla doing this? From Carla. You know, that's Carla's uh-huh. favorite. Yeah, I say, is Carla doing this? This is her favorite prank. And, but All I kept right. looking. It was like 20 some people saying, Tommy, please run Oak Curiosity <laughs> back for me. So, ladies and gentlemen, here it nah. is. Special <laughs> request Oak Curiosity coming at you. Yay, yay. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Marvin, please. Yeah, this is Marvin speaking. Uh, Marvin, hi, I'm calling you from Doc's office. I'm actually the lab technician, um, and you, you came in and got a physical, I guess, about a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Okay, and it's my understanding, this is for your for your occupation, correct? Yeah. Okay, you, you're in that, what do you do for a living when you're a, um... Oh, yeah, I'm a truck driver. Okay. Now, I was giving you a call about, I'm here looking at your records and all the testings that you actually went through, um... Wow. Let's see. Have you had any have you had any activity or any problems around your navel area? No, nah, everything's been fine. Okay. Everything all right, huh? Yeah, everything's fine, but I mean you you haven't had any any type of uh, nothing no breakout or anything around your navel or whatsoever? No, nah, man. The second time you asked me about my navel. No, nah, everything's going straight, man. Okay. I'm trying to see what's going on, man. What's happening? Okay, actually you've been diagnosed with um Oak triositis. And Oak triositis, Oak. Oak triositis is actually a fungus that comes out of South America. And you, you, you have no activity whatsoever around your navel? No, man, quit asking the same thing, man. Oak triositis. It's Oak triositis, sir. And what, 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 what you say that? What that is is actually, you're, you're, if you haven't had it yet, you say you haven't had any activity, there's going to be like a small little tree that's going to be growing from your navel. And it, it gets about six inches long, and it, it probably bears about, probably about 25 to 30 leaves on it, but it's very small. Whoa, whoa, run that back by me. You see a tree going to be growing out my nail. Yeah, it's going to be a small tree, and uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to get you to come back in. Probably in the next month, we're going to need you to come in so we can check it out. But it's got to grow its fullest potential before we can actually do anything to it. Nah, I can't come in in no month. I got to come in today, man. Somebody got to tell no, we, me what's we, going we, on, we, man. We, get this problem resolved, man, because I'm going to get married, man. Well, we can't. It has to grow its fullest potential, sir. And uh, the full term is actually like about four weeks before we can actually. Man, I'm not waiting for no four weeks, man. Somebody got to come tell me something right <laughs> now, man. I ain't going to go married, man, and have to fly out of town, man, and have something growing out of my neighbor, man. Y'all going crazy, man. Sir, oak triositis is something that's very rare. We were actually getting this assignment from overseas in South America on how to treat this. Man, I don't give a damn. Where is it, man? Somebody's going to have to come give me some, some help right now, man. 
I'm finna get ready to get married, man. I'm not finna be putting up with it, man. Somebody in this office, man, got to come down here and do something for me, man. And what you say, if you say I can cut it out myself? Sir, the best I can do is probably trim it a bit, you know, and maybe knock a few leaves off, but I cannot touch the full stalk at all. Man, you can cut this put a Band-Aid, do something Sir, if you cut it, there's a possibility. You cannot, sir. If you cut it, there's a possibility of hemorrhaging, and you're going to really create a bigger problem than what you have already. Man, f*** that sh- I'm trying to get this sh- pulled out, man. You didn't tell me can't nobody in that sh- where I'm driving down there to get this sh- pulled out, man. I'm going to get married in two sh- weeks, man. We're going to fly to Jamaica and, sh- and can't now. Sh- somebody can do the sh- for me. Sh- I'll pull this sh- off my sh- Sir, you cannot pull it out. You're going to create... Sh- that, man. You're going to create a bigger problem if you try to pull it out, sir. The problem is already there. I'm trying to get this sh- down, man. You mean to tell me that big sh- hospital ain't now... Man, can't help me. Sir, you want me to do, sir, man? It's not so I got mad. I have out of my stomach, and you tell me it ain't you can do, man. Sir, oak triosis is not something that we treat all the time. Like I said, it hails from South America, so we got. I don't give a if it hails from, from Great Britain. Somebody at the hospital for me to come down here and help me pull this. Oh, man. Sir, I understand what you're going through, but we have to let it grow its full term, which is four weeks, sir. The full man, root of it. Letting it grow, man. I ain't finna let it grow, man. It's finna go down right now, man. Y'all gonna have to do something, man. Sir, there's nothing we can do. We can probably trim it a little bit. You... The trim. Get some chainsaw and cut this, man. Do something. Sir, there's nothing we can do at this point but sit back and wait and let it grow its full term, okay? Can we get I'm you to. I'm not doing no Wait, man. Somebody finna help me right now, man. Sir, can we get an appointment for you in the next four to five weeks? Can we do that? No, you gotta get an appointment for me today. I'm finna get married, man. I'm finna fly to Jamaica. Man, I can't have no sticking out of me. I can't even sit at the airport, man. You gonna embarrass me like that, man. Have sticking out my neighbor. You crazy? Sir, I understand it. And like I said, oak triositis is very rare. And it's it's something that we haven't treated that many times here in the States. But overseas, the message that we're getting is that we need to let it grow its full term. So you may tell me, ain't nobody in America got oak tree. What the f*** is the name of that sh- man? It's oak triositis, sir. So how the f*** I get it if don't nobody else in the America got it. Sir, I could not believe that you were coming up with oak triositis here in the States. It's it's something very rarely seen here. There's been two people in the past that have been diagnosed with this, and they actually passed away. So now you're telling me some going to die, and you're going to tell me three weeks. Man, I'm coming down another day, man. Somebody's going to do something for me, Sir, man. there's nothing that we can do today until four to five weeks. Of- man, I got to go get married. I'm flying to Jamaica, man. Did you... What I just said, man. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I can't do anything if you don't see the tree already coming out of the navel yet. Cut the off. Somebody got to do something now. Damn, what you want me to do, man? I don't know what I want you to do, sir, but I have one more thing I can tell you. Yeah, well, what you got to say, man? Are you listening? I'm listening to you, man. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Earl. Man, you got to be f- Kidding me, man. <laughs> Damn, man, tell that <laughs> man, I'm gonna take that <laughs> out my wig, man. <laughs> man, you too, nephew Tommy, man. <laughs> y'all, man, y'all man, be going crazy as hell, man. I'm looking all of my damn neighbor thing, the tree finna grow out this, <laughs> man. I'm on the air, man. No, you ain't on the air right now. Man, I'm already nervous and <laughs> finna get married in two weeks. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Man. Hey, man, I got one more thing to ask you, Marvin, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Earl, if you're listening, your ass is out the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, hey, coming oh, up. All right, uh-uh. <laughs> Just say it. Oak Triosity is a movement. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In today's entertainment news, ladies, 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 as the nephew used to say when he did his tips. Oh, ladies, 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 ladies. <laughs> say it, nephew. <laughs> 
All right, are you sitting down, ladies? This is some some devastating news. Reggae John Page. You may not be very familiar with that that name, but if I say uh, the Duke of Hastings from oh. Bridgerton, okay, then you know who Reggae John Page is. Well, he's wow. not returning. Yeah, he's not returning for season two of Bridgerton. What? He's, what? what? He's right. Yes. <laughs> he's not. He the reason why I watch it. Dun, dun, what? Dun, dun. Listen to y'all, so it's the fellas, too. Okay. Yeah. I like, you know what? Man to man, that brother was putting it down. He was yes, bringing he it. Was. So. Yes, he I'm was. I'm sorry. Gonna, he was bringing it. Yeah. What are going to talk about? <sighs> yeah, he's, he's uh, not going to be on it. Uh, well, I ain't watch really? Really? Oh, I'm no. Too. I know. He lost Posted. me. Yeah, Lady Whistledon posted on the announcement page last Friday, uh, this past <sighs> Friday. She said, Dear readers, we bid adieu to Reggae John Page, who played the Duke of Hastings. The Duke of Hastings what? is not coming back for season two. Reggae John oh. Page also posted a statement on Instagram saying, It has been an absolute pleasure to be your Duke. Um, no. He went on to thank the cast and crew and also said, it's been beyond anything I could have imagined. The love is real and keep growing. This what? is an outrage. It really is. What, what are we what supposed to do Shonda now? Rhymes. Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes. What's going on? Let me say this. Yeah. Hold on. Shonda. Shonda, you got to fix this now. <laughs> now, now, this, this, now, this is too much. This what too is much, Shonda. What Bridgerton is going on Okay. Here? This is like uh, like Carrie not being on Scandal, Shonda. This is what this is doing to us. I'm not following yeah, this, all this the is not I'm good. Not this, this I'm is not, not following good. all the bridges. Oh, I'm not come doing on, it. man. There's Let's fix this. Not doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we yeah. gotta fix this. Oh, the Featheringtons and the, yeah, this is too much. This is too much right here. Who y'all? They ain't got no more light skinned pretty it? boys from England that can do this. Let this man do this. <laughs> <laughs> They bet they're going to find someone to take his place. Hopefully, he'll make us forget all about Reggae John Page, but oh, doubt it. That'll be a, Ooh, that'll be a not, tough one, though. That'll be yeah. a tough that's one. That's not good yeah. right there. Yeah, it's that's really not. Good. He was the draw. He was the oh, draw. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It is. All yeah. right. Can we move on? Is everyone okay? No, uh, everybody no. ain't all right, sure. <laughs> he ain't because coming back. <laughs> we got to talk Duke about this and other entertainment news. Uh, congratulations to another power couple, our very own nephew Tommy and his beautiful wife Jackie Miles. Yay! Saw it. Saw Jack. Thank How y'all. I made was the, she? I made the news. Oh my god. Yes, yes, yes. No, entertainment yeah. news. You and Jackie. Uh, the season premiere, you guys hosted <laughs> together. That was a nice surprise. You told us you had some surprises, Tommy, and that was a great surprise. Please tell Jackie mm. from all of us she did a great natural, job. We were very, natural. very proud of her. Very proud. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah, my girl. Thank What's thank up, y'all. Jay? She looked beautiful, up, Jack? and she was great. Yeah, we loved it. So have her on thank some y'all. more, Tommy. Yeah. I was I was so, you know, I was worried for her because I wanted yeah. her to do good. And I knew she was nervous. Yeah, I just, I just wanted her to do a good job. I think she did pretty she good. She did great. Really yeah. Be if, if, if she be was, yeah, you couldn't tell. She was very natural. You and I could host. tell you made her feel at ease. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna take my job, Junior? <laughs> no, she take your job. It's gonna be a new home. Okay. Now. And you can't say nothing. <laughs> All right, but as long anyway, as that yeah. check keep coming to this house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it's time to move on. Time for headlines. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and good morning. President Biden issued an Easter Day message yesterday on what was the nation's second Easter dealing with the pandemic, a fact he acknowledged in his message. As you celebrate this most holy day, we know many are still going without familiar comforts of the season. The virus is not gone. And so many of us still feel the longing and loneliness of distance. However, the latest travel numbers suggest that a lot of Americans are not letting distance stand between family and friends. In fact, the TSA says it's counted more than one and a half million people at the nation's airports. That's the highest number since the start of the pandemic over a year ago. So a lot of folks apparently are getting out and traveling. Meanwhile, as the CDC says that fully vaccinated folks are at low risk when they travel, they're still advising folks to refrain from all non-essential 
travel. Testimony resumes in Minneapolis today in the Derek Chauvin George Floyd murder trial. Last week, witnesses testified to the horror of seeing the white ex cop kneeling on Mr. Floyd's neck for almost 10 minutes. And in a rare occurrence, the so called blue wall of silence came down. Fellow officers, usually known to cover up and even lie for each other, admitted that what Derek Chauvin did amounted to intentional murder. Have you ever, in all the years you've been working for the Minneapolis Police Department, uh, been trained to kneel on the neck of someone who is handcuffed behind their back in a prone position? No, I haven't. If your knee is on a person's neck, that can kill them. And that was the head of the Homicide Division, Lieutenant Richard Zimmerman. Derek Chauvin has pled not guilty to second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. In Great Britain, on the heels of a report that claims there's no systematic racism in England, a report denounced by most non-white Brits, thousands of demonstrators hit the streets of London and cities all over Britain over the weekend to protest government plans to increase police powers. In the end, over 100 people were arrested. And sadly, multi-platinum rapper and actor DMX still reportedly on life support in an upstate New York hospital after suffering a heart attack, possibly related to a drug overdose. Possibly his family's holding a vigil outside the hospital this evening. His longtime manager says that DMX is brain dead. News of his condition has prompted a flood of prayer and support from fans and other celebrities like Missy Elliott, Rick Ross, Ja Rule, Ice-T, and Chance the Rapper, his lawyer for the last 25 years, Murray Richmond. I'm not, not in touch with any doctors. I'm in touch with members of the family, and uh, that's the source of my information. I pray for him. I hope that he's going to make it, but I have, well, I'm concerned. We all are. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, let's talk a little bit more about last night's versus battle uh, hosted Epic. by Steve Harvey. <laughs> and, and it was so good, Steve. I mean, really, it really was. I just loved it. I love the change of clothes. I love the entertainment <laughs> value, how they, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire got up and performed their songs, and then the Isley Brothers got up and performed theirs, and... Verdine the, in the hair. The, yeah. <laughs> a lot of Verdine. comments about Verdine. <laughs> yes. Ernie what did Verdine have on? I, I didn't get back. to see it. What did he have on? Cream, uh, well, like a white yeah. jacket and some red pants. Too. Red yeah, pants, with a white a strip going down, stripe going down the side. Uh huh. Verdine, go. Yeah. <laughs> so, how you feeling, Steve? It's the morning after. How you yeah, feeling? Yeah, you know, man, uh, I'm exhausted for yeah. one. But, you know, yeah. it, was, that, it was like yeah. such a, a yummy, mean, you know, it was long, you know, because. I mean, they're hits. You can't. How do you cut them hits up? Because when they wrote songs, there's parts. They had bridges and stuff like that. It ain't no little, you know, it's no short songs. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, the the thing that they had to do was certain things because it was on Apple Music. And so, you know, man, but just sitting there, man, feeling the vibe of them, they were so appreciative of being asked to do it. Oh, really? But, like, you know, Ronald Isley, man, has 28 platinum albums hmm. he's I heard had you say 111 that. songs that's been on the charts in the top 10 111 mm-hmm. so how did he pick 25 right wow. and then night, yeah. billboard mm-hmm. did not register black music mm-hmm. for really? a long time not because black people couldn't get on white radio Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, because if you look at MTV, MTV didn't allow blacks on it until Michael Jackson came out with Thriller. That's right. He put black people on that. So what? When they were making money in all them albums and selling millions of records, mm-hmm. you know, of course, BMI had them and all like that. They was on Adult Contemporary, but Billboard didn't recognize a lot of what they did. Yeah, you know? the racism is real. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. But the Kings mm-hmm. were on the stage last yes. night, man. And the and the was, comments, oh yeah. man, Steve, folks were loving you. <laughs> they were loving Ronald Isley. <laughs> Everybody, was, yeah, seventy. I can't get over. He's seventy nine. I just, and cool I didn't as see hell. that anywhere. I didn't see seventy nine anywhere. And cool as hell. Yeah, it looked like you guys were having a great time, Steve. It really does. And it was like the the crazy moment was before the show, mm-hmm. intermission, and after the show because you know they could they could be themselves because these are not TV stars, man. Mm-hmm. These dudes ain't internet stars. They don't they don't know really know nothing about no internet. Mm-hmm. Right. They go in the studio and they go on stage. And when they don't have they 
You know, but they didn't have a band. They didn't have their instruments. It's mm-hmm. just almost like they out of their element. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but Ernie a little Osley, awkward for them. He, he bought it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll have more about the versus battle last night with our own Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, Steve, we're back talking about the versus battle last night in which yeah. you hosted. Um, you know, I love the story you told about uh, you you wrote the words to Earth, Wind & Fire's devotion down and you gave them to one of this this girl you were interested in, yeah. Miyoshi Jackson or whatever yeah. her name was. Uh-huh. And uh, she said she thought that was so sweet. How, how did uh, the fellas, what did they think about that, Earth, Wind & Fire? I mean, like, they was tripping, man, because, you know, I have... It's like really crazy. It's like my daughter said. All this music that that I hosted last night was really the soundtracks of my life. Earth, Wind, and Fire. See, I knew Ron Osley and their music before that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they, yeah. Work to do been who's around. that lady and all like that. Cause my mm-hmm. brothers and them listen to it. Right. Mm-hmm. But when I was old enough to go and buy my own music, Earth, mm-hmm. Wind, and Fire came out when I was a senior in high school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Lord have mercy, Jesus, when that damn devotion album came out, uh-huh. Mighty Mighty, <laughs> you yes. need devotion, mm-hmm. blessed are the children. I wrote that entire song out on a piece of poster board, rolled it up, put it on my back, got on my bike, rolled to Miyoshi house and gave it to her. Wow. Yes. Cause I I ain't know you know. Such a you lover. need to hit this. This is so beautiful, man. Yeah. I need I need a chick to hear this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She said, yeah. "Wow, that's the sweetest what? thing anybody ever done." That was a true story. But you oh. asked Ronald Isley a question last night, Steve, or the, and Ernie Isley about writing songs about women. Oh, Didn't yeah. you ask them? Yeah, and they mm-hmm. said they had to mm-hmm. compliment. That that all of their songs was complimenting women. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, they yes. they they said they never, they don't, you had to compliment women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All their songs was about love, feeling, thinking, missing them, wanting them, having mm-hmm. them, being lonely without them, trying to do right by them, you know. I mean, you know, and, and that's that's how they focused on their songs. If you look at Earth, Wind & Fire, they wrote love songs. And when they wasn't writing love songs, they wrote songs about the world. Yeah. That's the way stuff. of the world. Mm-hmm. Fight the power. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff, paint a pretty smile each day. And then, uh, you know, and, and then when they wrote a party song, it still had a message in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Boogie Wonderland. Let's groove tonight. Da-da-da-da. You know, fight the power. All this. And it was the first time an R&B group ever cussed on an album oh, was when oh, yeah, Ronald Osley said, all this bull blank going down. Right, fight the power. Yeah. Time is truly wasting. Mm-hmm. Doom, 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 doom. That was a jam, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a message song, too. And yeah, everything yeah. they wrote was about messaging, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, I understand the internet. I understand, you know, the the demographics that created Versus. What Swiss and Timberland created was for a different demographic. They reached when they put Patty and uh, Gladys, Gladys on. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. gave it to them, man. But that was something for, and this was for a different generation of people, man. Yeah. yeah, you know, but you know what, too, totally. young folks, knew, they knew some of the music. They knew it from their parents because they of their right. parents, right? Mm-hmm. But then they also knew it from sampling. You know, mm-hmm. Isley Brothers. You know, Ice Cube. Today was oh. a good day. They knew some of it. Yeah, I like the fact that D Nice did that. He did a, a yes. segment of the showing Set. the samples. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. yeah, man. And it's that really, was cool. uh, it was really a tribute to them brothers, man. I just want everybody to understand who had different comments to make. You have to understand, these dudes are professional showmen. They on stage with bands. They don't do no lip syncing. They got bands. They all play instruments. Verdeen White play the bass. You know, they put on a whole show, man. And so to have them stand there with just mics and, you know, lip and sing along and then be on TV, so to speak, even though it's the internet, you know, it's it's that's not their element. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But I loved it, man, and I loved it for them, man. And they they were so happy to do it together, man, because they had such high respect for one another. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can I tell us that. Yes. All right, uh, thank you, Steve. We'll talk more about it coming up next. The Nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today's subject. I do not want to be in his wedding. Okay, Mm. we'll get into that Mm. in just a few. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Peed on my house. Peed on my house. Let's go, cat dog. Peed on my house. Hello? Hello, uh, I'm trying to reach a uh, uh, Mr. R- I think that's the name. Yeah, this is this. Is, what's this in regard to? Uh, this, uh, this is about an uh, air conditioner unit. You did some work uh, for us over on uh, my house over off Street. Do you remember coming out there last week? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Right, my uh, it was a lady there. My wife. She let you in to come. Uh, right, right. Is there, is there a problem? Is there a problem? The air's not cooling or what? No, 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 no. It's cooling. Everything. Matter of fact, I want to tell you uh, uh, that you did a you did a good job. But uh, I got a question for you now. When you was at the house and you was uh, working on the air conditioner out there in the backyard, did you did you happen to go on the side of my house and pull out and use the bathroom right there on the side? Did you go over there and, and you do number one on the side of my house? Say what? Well, what I'm saying is that my wife tells me that. When you were there, that you you went on the she was looking out the window. She said she, that when you was there, that you uh, and went and used the bathroom on the side of the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I did what now to what? I right, you 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 and you did number one over on the side of the house. Now is is that something that you did? Say man, look, uh, you you got to understand something, man. All right, now I, I apologize if that did happen, but you got to understand something. You know, we down south, man, and, you know, we talking 85, 90, 95 degree weather, man. I got to stay hydrated. I got to drink a lot of fluids. So, you know, with me being the age that I am, I have to drink a lot of fluids and attend to pass through. Uh, that, look, now, once, once again, I said I apologize. I understand all that. But you know what? I can't accept no apology like that when I got a man that got on the side of my house and then oh, and Man, now, I'm apologizing to you, and you coming off on me like that? You, you done you done. In f- on the side of my house in front of my wife. I, now, look here, young man. Now, if your wife saw me <laughs> evidently, she need to see some type of because <laughs> you evidently ain't doing some <laughs> you Who the hell? Who you think you talking to? Why is your wife watching me anyway do my work? What, is she that hard up that she got to look at the old man? <laughs> look, look, look. All I know is I don't want no man at my house, in the house, side of the house, backyard. <laughs> nothing. Well, you should have been there. Hey, I, look, man, let me tell you something, dog. Let me tell you something. I'm the only person at my house. You understand well, me? Well, evidently you ain't right if she out there looking at me. Look here, son. I'm a professional, okay? I do my job, and I take my job with pride, okay? It's not being professional. If there's something that I did, that's that water running through me. All right? Okay, now, but you don't you don't at no other man's house. And you at my house, and my wife sitting there looking at you out the window. Now, I got a problem with that. Well, what you need to have a problem with is your wife looking at me and if that's what I did. You know what? You need to be at home and give her something to look at other than looking at me. You don't tell me what I need to do about my wife. Now, you don't yeah, go man, to another you man. About your... Man, you know what? I'm about to lose it, all right? Now, I tell you gonna, you what. You, you're going to make me lose it. Let me, let, me get my, that guy, let me get my book. That's all. Uh, yeah, I got you your get... right here. You damn right. right. And I'm going to tell you what. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, I'm that's fine. I'm going to show you what it is. You, you don't at another man's house. You don't do that. And people, my wife looking out the window. And I bet you knew that them blinds was open. Young man, nah. You did, you did. You did me real upset with these accusations. All right? Now, look. You had, you had, what is the street? Nah, I, you are, you, you know where I'm at. You, out there, I will show you what the I want you to bring your ass back over no, here I on Phillips. I know exactly what you said. You that y'all on that on that on that go down uh street. I'm gonna come over there and I got something for you. I got something for you. 
Now, Who you, you think? Me disregard my professionalism, and I'm gonna come show you what being is about. Look, man, what you don't do is at another man's house, and that's what you did, and you know it ain't called for. Now you could have held that. I apologized, man. I had to go. I told you I drank a lot of fluids in this hot heat, man. Now what else do you want me to do? I want you to keep your fluid till you get to the service station down the street, but not in my backyard side of the house and my wife looking out the window. Man, f you and f what you talking about. If I did, I apologize. If you can't accept it, then the hell with it. Look at I, you, you're going to me off and make me do something up in here. I'm telling you, you now. What you going to do, man? I done told you. I apologize to you, and I will come over there and kick your okay? No, you ain't. I, I take, you'll do what? Let me tell I you something. I'll kick your young because judging from the age of your wife, your wife is young, and I know you're young. You can't deal with no old school. I'll kick your young you gonna You're going to get your ass whooped today. You hear me? You're no, going to get. No, let, no, let me no, take you. you street two, I'll come your young ass. Let me tell you, so I got one more thing to say to you. Is you listening to me? Speak, damn it. This is nephew wrong. Tommy. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy named. Hey, man. <laughs> man, now you know what? I'm going to get with his. <laughs> he know I got heart palpitations. <laughs> and I don't need this type of in my life, man. <laughs> He said, man, my boy be out there fixing air conditions and heaters all day. He said, man, let me tell you something. He said he'd be frustrated to begin with. He said, begin my call. He, he said, know let me... it, man, because I got nine or ten more I still got to do today. <laughs> hey, man, you all right? Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right now, nephew. I'm all right now, nephew. <laughs> nephew Tommy, <laughs> you and that Steve Hall are some damn fools in the morning. I listen to y'all cats every in the morning, man. I don't know how in the hell I sit back riding laughing. And how y'all get people, and y'all done got me with the same <laughs> Oh, man. I enjoy y'all show, man. Y'all keep th up the good God going to work. I appreciate it, man. I got one more question to ask you, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Well, you know, the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this goes out to all the people that work at... <laughs> You gotta go. Where you gonna go? This go out to everybody that work at people's houses, uh -huh. and you know you Contract you, you decide you just want to go in the backyard somewhere. This this is to you. This is yeah. a special tribute prank for you all that just go anywhere. Just, 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 just whip it out. Yeah. You should let me use your bathroom. That's all you yeah, it can be easy. Yeah. Well, y'all ain't finna come in my house with them dirty shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we own the house now. You know, men can't hold it like women. We can't. No. We no. can't. Sure, we can't. Especially after 50. When your mind say you got to go, you got to go. And everybody <laughs> need to get out of the way. 40. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Yes. Got to tell you, I'm really feeling the, the new season, season four. Of Come Ready on, to give it to me. Oh. What y'all think? Yes. Tommy. I'm going to give it to you, but I got to give it to your wife, Jackie. She did have my thing. queen on there she with was, me. Yes, so I love oh that, Tommy. Yeah. You need to I have her you. on more often. She was Let great. Tell you something, man. This how, huh? how, how I know you big, dog. Some friends uh -huh. came from my town, right? We had dinner at 5 o'clock, right? Then my boy opened his mouth. He said, hey, man, it's 8.30. I got to get to the house. Ready for love coming on. <laughs> yeah. I'm with the like he's a dog. I gotta go. Ready for love coming up. Thank you, know you really man. This is a blessing. Thank you for bringing Tom. Chris back. Great show, man. Congrats, oh man, Tom. thank y'all. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all. All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. I do not want to be in his wedding is a subject. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. All right. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject... <laughs> <laughs> a letter. You tied from versus a letter. Letter. 
All right, subject. Uh, I don't want to be in this wedding, okay? Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been asked to stand with my friend in his wedding. I'm a female, so I can't be a groomsman, but I'll be at his side at the wedding. Why am I not a bridesmaid, you ask? The future wife is controlling, and she doesn't want him to keep any of his female friends. My friend and I are so close that he officiated my wedding, and now he and my husband are the best of friends. I've had mixed feelings from the beginning about this wedding, so it's no secret that I don't think it will last. Here's why. My friend has a habit of putting up with selfish and whiny women and then runs to me when they get too unbearable. She's the worst one he has been with so far. Uh, She doesn't seem to like any of our friends who are all married and have better things to do than coddle her and beg her for her friendship. She's talked crap about all of us, and my friend will tell us in an indirect way, so we just avoid her at all costs. Despite him spending all of his time with her and her two kids, he can't spend time with his niece and nephew without her getting an attitude. He also wants at least one child of his own, and she's told him she doesn't want any more children. He said she's jealous because she doesn't have but one friend, and she's not close with her sister. I told him that's a red flag because it means she's hard to get along with. Anything I tell him falls on deaf ears. I want him to see that he's making a big mistake before it's too late. Should I skip the wedding and lose a friend or try to befriend his wife once more? I don't want to go anywhere. I'm not welcome. Please help. Well, I say no. Don't skip the wedding. Just don't be in the wedding. All right? Um, Don't do it, okay? Uh, You will be miserable. And I'm going to tell you this. You're not a bridesmaid because you're his friend, not hers. So tell your friend you're going to be there to support him, but you don't feel comfortable knowing that his wife doesn't approve of you as his friend and all of that, and you don't want to be in that mess. And that's all you say about his wife, because if she's as bad as you say she is, he'll find out sooner or later. Unfortunately, it might not be before he marries her, especially the part about her not wanting any more children. So you want a child, but your wife doesn't, and you guys have already talked about that, and you know this, but you're still going to go ahead with the with the wedding? That That's a serious red flag, and a, you should not do, all right? I, I don't know why you're still marrying this woman, thinking, I guess, perhaps that she might change her mind that probably won't happen she seems pretty clear of what she doesn't (laughs) want uh anyway um you know i i I still say don't skip the wedding you don't want to lose him as a friend uh and my advice to you to be to stay out of their business because you know way too much about what's going on in their business but i guess he does tell you a lot but just go to the wedding and steer clear of all the foolishness steve you know, this letter kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. Because it gets crazy at the beginning. So this woman is really good friends with this man who's marrying a woman she doesn't approve of. Mm-hmm. But the friend wants him, her in the wedding. Like Shirley said, now you can't be a groom's, a bridesmaid, because you're not a friend of the bride. So if you're going to be next to him at the wedding, what is you going to be? <laughs> The best man, I'm, woman. I'm stuck. <laughs> I, I, what wedding is this? Because I ain't never seen this before. Yeah. I ain't never seen a woman be a groomsman. Not saying you can't be, but I ain't never seen it. So if you're not a bridesmaid, but you're going to be next to his side at the wedding, as a what? you just going to stand up there? What you going to have on? Because you can't wear the tux. You're a lady groom. She's a what? A lady groom. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I don't think the wife's going for that. (laughs) No, she's not. (laughs) So she says that your friend, they so close that he officiated her wedding, and now Mm -hmm. he and her husband are the best friends. Mm -hmm. Now, this lady says she got mixed feelings about his wedding, so she don't think it's going to last because your friend has a habit to do be putting selfish and whining women in his life. And then he run to me when they get too unbearable. But this one is the worst one so far. Okay. So the woman don't like none of y'all's friends who are all married and have better things to do than coddle her. She talks crap about all of us. And then your friend 
this guy, tells y'all in indirect ways what she's saying about y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay, pump your pump your brakes, partner. Why are you doing that? So now you telling your friends, your girl that's your friend, mm-hmm. what your future wife says about her and everybody else. Bro, whose side you on? Mm-hmm. I mean, you already on on your wife to be side. She ain't on your side. So what the hell y'all getting married? Ain't nobody on the same team in, in this yeah. letter. So y'all avoid this lady. Now he got, she got two kids. He can't spend time with his niece and nephew without her getting an attitude. Damn, this chick right here. Why is he married? And then he want a child of his own, and she told him she don't want no more kids. What, Shirley Wright, what y'all getting married for? I don't get it. Y'all don't want the same things. Y'all don't want the same friends. Y'all don't want the same wedding. And y'all don't even want the same amount of kids. Mm. Hold on, Steve. Hold that thought. We'll have part two of your response coming up. At 23 minutes after the hour, subject, I don't want to be in his wedding. All right, we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject, I don't want to be in his wedding. Well, I'm going to tell y'all something about this letter. What? This letter is over with just like this marriage is. <laughs> <laughs> this right. is some short-lived mess right here, man. This actually has no chance. These two people that are getting married don't want the same things. Mm -hmm. This guy has a friend who's a girl that's one of his best friends so much that he wants her in the wedding. The girl that wrote this letter don't want to be in the wedding because of her relationship with the wife. But she wants to be, but the dude in there is going to come and be in the wedding and be at his side. Now, they such good friends that this guy done officiated this girl's wedding with her husband. Mm-hmm. And now the girl's husband and this guy she's talking about is best friends. Well, the wife don't want her as a bridesmaid. I don't know what she going to do anyway because she can't be a groomsman. He knows his wife don't like the girl, the, none of the friends, and he tells the friends indirectly what the wife say about them. He also is always picking controlling and whining women, and the woman says this is the worst one. Now, the woman he's going to marry has two children. He can't spend no time with his niece and nephew without her getting the attitude because she wants him all to herself. And then he has expressed that he wants a child, and she just says she don't want no more kids. Mm, mm, mm. All right, let's go over this. She don't like none of your friends. No, none of your friends like her. You tell your friends what she say, so you more on your friend's team than you are on the wife's team. She don't want no more kids. You do. We got a lot that ain't matching up right here. Yeah. So why y'all getting married? I don't understand. And then he said that she's jealous because she doesn't have but one friend, and she's not close with her sister. Now, if you're not close with your sister, can explain why he's not close with any, why she's not close with none of y'all friends. She ain't even friends with her sister. So if you can not like your sister, now I know family different sometimes. You don't get to pick them like you do friends. But you can't even have a relationship with your sister. You told him that's a red flag because that means she hard to get along with. But everything you tell him, you say falls on deaf ears. You want him to see that he's making a big mistake before it's too late. Should I skip the wedding and lose a friend or try to befriend his wife once more? Well, you could try. But didn't you say in the letter, she don't want y'all, she don't want you to be close, get rid of all your female friends? Ain't you a female? So what you going back over there cozying up to her for? This is fitting to fall apart. All you should do is just be his friend. You can't be in the wedding, but you should go to the wedding. But you should have a conversation and just tell him. Now, I know it's falling on deaf ears, she said. But just tell her, I'm going to come there and be at the wedding, but your wife don't want no more kids. You do. Your wife don't want you to have no more, no female friends. I'm a female. Mm-hmm. So what are you and your wife doing that has compatibility to it? And I don't right. see it. 
So this is this letter, this marriage is over, just like this letter is over. Like I said, <laughs> there ain't a whole lot more I can say to it. Anybody else want to say something? Because here, this a wrap. Tommy. It's, this ain't going to make it. No, he pretty much said it. It's pretty much the hell over with. I'm, but I'm with what did you say she was me. She was going to be in the wedding? What? Uh, a what? Uh, uh, a, a lady grooms. <laughs> That's 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 or, all or a groom's lady girl, <laughs> a groom's girl, a groom lady, go. Gigi, a Gigi, a groom's girl. Maybe she can get on her knees and bring the ring down. <laughs> ring bear, <little> ring bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a crazy marriage, but he's not listening to anyone, so. Whew, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, no what sense. are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's if it's not good him. before you get married, yeah. it's going to hell. Especially Boy. the part about the baby. That's hell. the most important thing. You want a baby and she doesn't? That's, that's, the that's gate, a deal breaker. You know that? Yeah, a it deal is. Don't worry. But he don't want the deal to be broken. Why, though? Bruh, you're not winning in this one. Mm-mm. You can't see your family because she wants you to spend all your time with her family, her kids. This is what, huh. anyway. What well, can't th- you... This is how divorces happen. Yeah. People that ain't thinking. Yeah, going straight they get into married it for like... all the wrong reasons. You're right. Well, I, but I don't even know what what reason he's using to get married. Um. Yeah, I mean, she didn't say that. She just said that he wants her in the wedding. Um, uh, his wife. She is whiny and selfish and then he runs to the to the woman who wrote this letter when it gets too unbearable for him so he knows so he let me knows. take a guess at what happened here okay mm-hmm. the, the wife that he's gonna marry is real whiny mm-hmm. she done whined her way up on the proposal uh-huh. mm-hmm. now he finna go through with it just to stop the whining to shut her up Boy, how stupid it is. How stupid. Boy, you finna, yeah. you finna get up in some hell here. Yeah. And y'all call me stupid. See, this is what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. There's some people got me you? beat now. There's some folks got me beat now. All right, listen, we got to get out of here. you ain't this kind of stupid, though, Tommy. <laughs> Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, Sports Talk with Junior, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, listen up. Junior is here with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, first of all, let me say thank you to everybody who came out to the Atlanta Comedy Theater Thursday. It was outstanding. Great show. How was it, man? Yeah. Man, crazy, man. I, it felt hey, good. Hey, dog, I, I, how it feel to go back? Dog, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Birmingham. How was it, man, that first step Tommy, out there? Tommy, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> It ain't, first of all, the cord was wrapped up so tight I couldn't move that far. But it felt good even to start the show like that. Just to be on the stage, man. Right. Man, people clapping for you. They glad to see you. We, it was like a family reunion. Everybody was glad to see everybody. Man, oh, my it was, God. It was great. Yeah, people happy to be go out, out there. Huh? Yeah, just happy to be out, man. Social mm-hmm. distancing and everything. They had that their mask on. They were laughing through the mask. There you go. Yeah. There you go. No. Okay. I know they was hot, though. I couldn't stand the logo. They was up there hot. But it, well, thank y'all so much, though, ATL. I appreciate it. I loved it. Loved it. Mm-hmm. But I want to say a huge thank you and shout out to Major League Baseball, man. This was a big move. I'm proud of baseball for doing this, for moving the MLB All-Star game from Atlanta after the state of Georgia oh, passed a new restrictive voting law. Yes. They moved it. They took it out. That's They're they not playing. That's man, big. When baseball do that, yeah. that's yeah. big. Shout that's out to that's the players, the huge. owners, the league. That's the big. players, the owners. Yeah. You right, Carla. The league. They yeah. moved it out because of the voting laws that they passed here in Georgia. Man, they just said we're not gonna be a part of that, man. So we, I'm proud of them for doing that. Major League Baseball released a statement stating that Major League Baseball fundamentally supports voting rights for all Americans and opposes mm. restrictions to the ballot box, man. And so they made that move, man. It didn't take long. It didn't even think about it. They did it. It's over. I heard, you know, the the governor is complaining, but we're not we're not having the game here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> when you get finished yeah. complaining, when, when you finish complaining, they they're not playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. good, good. So that's, that's big. That's big. That's yeah, that's big. 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 Yeah. You're right. Yeah, bravo to Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Well, you know, Final Four weekend, you know, basketball and other sports news. Junior, champ- what's up? Did you see it, that Tommy? Gun- that Gonzaga game. Hey man. Ooh. 
<laughs> Gonzaga is not playing, man. But you know what? Who else ain't playing? Baylor ain't playing either, man. So no, the game is set for the night. Baylor and Gonzaga going at it, man. But I got to give a shout out to Stanford. They beat Arizona by one point in the women's championship game. That was tight game. Ooh, that was a good game. To 53. Ooh. And it was a good game. College Them girls be balling. Not- yes, yes. They- I'm girls telling you, these man. girls be hooping. Yes, yes, they do, man. And yes. they don't get the recognition they should get, man. They are ball. Oh, man. Well, oh, they getting gosh. it today. They getting it right now. Ladies. Yes. Go ahead, go. ladies. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, trending this morning, last night's versus battle between Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Isley Brothers with your host, Steve Harvey. We'll talk more about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, you've been riding high all morning, just, you know, reminiscing about last night and the the big versus battle with the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, I got a question, though. Go ahead. Go ahead, Okay, so, Steve, what was your favorite moment from last night, from versus battle, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Isley Brothers? What was your favorite moment? (laughs) I want (laughs) to... Not that you sing it. Did he go back to it? Yes. We... You come on, boy. That one did something to me. Uh huh. Uh, Love's Holiday did something to uh-huh. me. Uh huh. <laughs> they, they, he played a different version of That's the Way of the World. That yeah. was the first song, uh-huh. Uh-huh. which is my all time favorite song. So that, yeah, mm-hmm. but that damn can't hide love. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I like the fact that they admired each other's music, too. Yes. You know, I think I remember Ron Isley saying something about after he heard Devotion, he wrote Choosy Beggar. And man, uh, if you listen to lover. it, because he uh, sung uh, it while yeah. it was playing and said. Choosy Lover. Mm-hmm. And he Choosy sung the beggar. exact same melody. Mm-hmm. I said, uh-huh. damn. Yeah. yeah. So they've been admiring each other for quite a while. I like that. Then they said they were doing an album together. A collabo. That's what they yeah. said, man. Wow. And you know what? It was so cool for the for Earth, Wind, and Fire to watch Ernie Isley when he Play did that, that voyage to Atlantis. Was mm-hmm. that when he did that breakdown on the? Oh my! Mm-hmm. Oh, he mm-hmm. was killing it, killing the game on the guitar. You know, he when he put that thing up, he was playing it with his teeth. Wow! wow. wow. <laughs> no, he was, re- and we put it behind his back. He was playing it. Yeah, that was. Yeah. that was. Those were just cool moments. I mean, just major moments. So, how many? Again, how many outfits did Ron Isley bring? Ron had ten. <laughs> I'm just gonna decide which one I'm gonna wear. I said, Ron, I ain't bring all these damn changes. How many changes you had, Steve? Two. Two. Okay. What they told me in the mission to want uh-huh. you to change? I said, all right. Well, we wanted you to change. That's part of the show. Yeah, you had to change. Well, You're so supposed cool. to do that. Oh, that's that. Although that purple suit was fly, I wouldn't have been mad if you had kept that on all night because it was really in the white hat. Could have wore it. Butcher, butcher, butcher. <laughs> change. <laughs> but it was really nice. I mean, just everything I loved. Man, loved it. it was just—it mm-hmm. was just such an honor, man, to sit there. I, and I tell you, man, my daughter Carly, she summed it up best. She said, Dad, these was the songs was the soundtrack to your life. That was crazy for me because I had never looked at it that way. Uh-huh. And that, that's why I got to text her back and tell her that's the best message I got. Oh. She so said, to see happen. you sitting up there with your friends. Because I'm friends with these dudes. Mm-hmm. I just don't get to see them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't seen Ron. The last time I saw Ron... Oh, it was probably five, six years ago. He looked like he was happy to see you too, Steve. I oh, well, hug you, you should have seen. End. Oh, you should have seen us in the dressing room when I got to the <laughs> wheel turn theater. Uh huh. Oh, we were sitting back there crying. Oh. Mm-hmm. See, when I get with Humpty Digital now. Underground and uh-huh. Do Mine and be with Humpty <laughs> Neil, uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah, that's gonna be my moment right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> my- <laughs> really. <laughs> When I get with Hunt and Neil. Want me short ass verse of time with that one here? <laughs> oh, man. 
We Y'all doing just going to do okay. a v. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do verses with just no, no. one hit. No, you, that's one just going to be hit v. Verses. V. You don't get versus. <laughs> <laughs> Were you nervous at all, Steve? A little bit before. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because I didn't understand the format. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And I knew they didn't. Uh-huh. So now you just got eight, eight black dudes out there don't know what to do. All right. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at about 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We have to say this. We applaud Major League Baseball and now Coca-Cola, Delta, and J.P. Morgan Come Chase mm-hmm. are all leading the way of Georgia-based companies condemning the state's new Georgia voter suppression That's law. Big. Congratulations That's big. to those companies for stepping out. Yeah, the oh, CEOs hey. of these companies uh, stand against um, efforts Thanks. that prevent Americans from being able to uh, vote. Thank you, Coca-Cola. thank you, thank you. It That's is amazing, it. man, mm-hmm. what they've done in Georgia. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's crazy. Now, he all out front talking about we'll not be buffaloed and ran and our state is a great state and we'll quit drinking Coca-Cola. Go ahead. Hmm. Georgia ain't the only place. to quit drinking Coca-Cola. No, because because y'all want some voter (laughs) suppression. Right. And it's just trifling what they've done. Now, he did the signing behind closed doors. Now, he going to come all out in the front now and try to. Mm-hmm. Act like, and bring up Stacey Abrams' names. Stacey Abrams was actually against the boycott because she knows it'll hurt the economy in Georgia, and so is uh, Keisha Lance Bottom. But she appreciates the companies for standing yes, up. And and Governor Kemp, let me tell you something, partner. Whenever your day come up, this your last mm-hmm. turn. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, we'll have more on the Steve Harvey Trump. Trump. We'll have more on the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, Steve, we're back talking about the versus battle last night in which you hosted. Um, You know, I love the story you told about uh, you you wrote the words to Earth, Wind and Fire's devotion down and you gave them to one of this this girl you were interested in, Miyoshi Jackson or whatever her name was. Mm hmm. And uh, she said she thought that was so sweet. How, how did uh, the fellas, what did they think about that, Earth, Wind, and Fire? I mean, like, they was tripping, man, because, you know, I have, it's, like, really crazy. It's like my daughter said. All this music that that I hosted last night was really the soundtracks of my life. Earth, Wind, and Fire. See, I knew Ron Isley knew music before that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they, yeah. Work to do been who's around. that lady and all like that. Cause my mm-hmm. brothers didn't listen to it. Right. Mm-hmm. But when I was old enough to go and buy my own music, mm-hmm. Earth When the Fire came out when I was a senior in high school. Mm-hmm. And Lord have mercy, Jesus. When that damn devotion album came out. Uh-huh. Mighty <laughs> Mighty. <laughs> You yes. need devotion. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the children. I wrote that entire song out on a piece of poster board. Oh, rolled it up, put it on my back, got on my bike, rolled to Miyoshi House and gave it to her. Wow. Because yes. <laughs> I, I ain't know, you know. Such a You lover. need to hit this. This is so beautiful, man. Yeah, I need I need a chick to hear this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She said, yeah. "Wow, that's the sweetest what? thing anybody ever done." That was a true story. But you cool. asked Ronald Isley a question last night, Steve, or the, and Ernie Isley about writing songs about women. Oh, Didn't yeah. you ask them? And yeah, they mm-hmm. said they had to mm-hmm. compliment. What was that? that all of their songs was complimenting women. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you know they yes. they they said they never they don't you had to compliment women. All their songs is about love, feeling, thinking, missing them, wanting them, having Mm -hmm. them, being lonely without them, trying to do right by them, you know. I mean, you know, and and that's that's how they focused on their songs. If you look at Earth, Wind & Fire, they wrote love songs, and when they wasn't writing love songs, they wrote songs about the world. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Fight the power. Mm -hmm. You know, start paint a pretty smile each day. And then, um, you know, and, and then when they wrote a party song, it still had a message in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Boogie Wonderland, let's groove tonight. Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. You know, fight the power. All this. And it was the first time an R&B group ever cussed on an album. Oh, was when oh, yeah, Ronald Osley said all this bull blank going down. To right. Twice the power. Coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, our last break of the day on this Monday after the versus battle with the host of the versus battle and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are at our last break of the day on this Monday after the big versus battle which was greatness, hosted by greatness. <laughs> we enjoyed it all. Thanks for it, Steve. Thanks for that moment. It was It was fun. really good, man. It was mm -hmm. really good. So now I can, that's just one of the things I never saw coming that God graced me with. I can chalk that up as another great moment. I, had, I didn't see that coming mm. at all. You know, mm -hmm. it's just amazing, man. Some of the things that God has graced me to do. I mean, it's just... It really trips me out, man, because God does things. You know, you know, grace is God's undeserved merit and favor. And when it says undeserved merit, that means merit means you can't earn it. Mm -hmm. It's just you can't earn grace. And grace can't be earned and it can't be purchased. It's just something God gives to you and you, you and the average person don't even have sense enough to ask for it. Because grace is so big that you really don't know how to ask for it because it's it's like a, a, a I guess it's like a surprise bonus. For your faith. And mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simply because you believe in me. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't acknowledge me as much as you should, I'm just going to award you some grace. Mm -hmm. Simply because I love you and I, I see you trying. So here comes a free one, Steve Harvey. I'm going to allow you to sit with some groups that you would never get in the same room with in years. And I'm going to let you sit and have a moment with them. And it wasn't for getting the highest numbers, and it was, but it was such an epic night in terms of the sheer number of hits that these men have. It's oh, yeah. daunting. You look at a man... Everyone in fire got 35 albums. What? That's a lot. 35 albums. That's a lot. <laughs> they say, I don't know. We got 35 albums. You know, they, they put out stuff people don't know nothing about. You know, and then you look at Ron Osley has had 28 platinum albums. 100, 111 singles on the chart. Daunting numbers, man. Yeah. And they were doing it at a time when they didn't track black people on Billboard. And like I said, these cats was doing that at a time when there was no tracks. You couldn't lay your track down and I come lay down. They eventually got into that. But when they first started, it wasn't none of that. It wasn't no tracks, wasn't no auto-tune, none of it. Mm. They had to go in the basement, practice, come upstairs, show it to their mom and them. They say, that other part don't sound good. They take their ass back down that basement. Practice, come upstairs, get some studio money, and boom, like Irwin and Fire said, they was doing the station wagon tour when Head to the Sky came out. Mm. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. That's just a, a deep. Yeah. I, I mean, just hearing these stories is like the history of it all. You know, it's just the history of so the many hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many hits. And I just wish that young people. Even though we're in a fast society, I wish young people would understand sometimes they old. Old is the goal, partner. Yeah, I heard you say that. If you uh -huh. can be 79 and look and sound like Ron Osley, you better hope. Woo! You better hope that you can stand up and be that charming at 79. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Still be able to drive, move around, and all like that. 
Come on, man. That's a blessing, man. Mm-hmm. It really is, Steve. And to watch the sheer number of hits them cats had, that's history, man. And I was just so honored to be sitting there, man, with the men who created, in essence, what my daughter said was the soundtrack of my life. That's craziness, man. And like, really, man, I have to put that in perspective. I'm really going to think about it today as I go out to go throughout my day because I have to really look at this man and go, wow, what a moment that God allowed me to have. And everybody don't understand what was happening last night. Everybody wasn't interested in last night. But for those who were, who got dressed up for it, who was sitting there listening to it and loving it, you know, man, you can't worry about, and that's another thing. Let me let me tell y'all people something. When you're on your way to something God has done for you, you can't worry what everybody say about it. You just can't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You have to go on about your business. When God does something for you, everybody not going to see it. Right. And that's why God gave it to you and not to them. So for the people who appreciated it, it was for you. The people that sat there and said, man, that was dope. I love that. That's who it was for. You know, Mm -hmm. it's easy to get on the bandwagon and find something to criticize, but that's okay. You know, maybe it's not your thing. If you're living in this world and you think that everybody's going to like you, folks, you're going to be highly disappointed. Prepare. Prepare yourself for the fact that everybody ain't going to like you. And be okay with it. Live your life for those who appreciate you, who get you, who love you, and support you. And don't give your energy to the other people because it's undeserving. Don't waste your energy trying to get somebody to like you when their job is to not like you. (laughs) They're here for that. And so as you have haters in life, understand that Haters are there to let you know that you're doing something and you on track. And just remember that, man. So when God gives you great moments in your life, just appreciate them. And when you run into people who don't get it, it's why God didn't give them that great moment. He gave it to you. That's how I feel. Great verses last night. Thank y'all for your love and support. Y'all keep talking to God. God would love to hear from you. And we'll see y'all tomorrow. Yeah! For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 